up, girl? Hey, Emily. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. Um, we're here in my living room in downtown Fort Myers. We're in the this is like the Times Square of <laughs> of Fort Myers, basically. <laughs> is it? Is it? Above Fords, is, yes. it is it wrong to say that this is the Times Square? I'm like. No, I think that's super accurate. So this is like the Trump Towers. Um, <laughs> You wildin', but yeah, I would say so. Oh man, you are. Um, well, I want first off. I want to start by saying welcome home. Yes, welcome. homecoming. This, this is, is my homecoming. this is the this is the first of many uh, of a series that we're, we're going to call homecoming, and um, what we're trying to do is we know that people end up going to different, bigger places, and not even just bigger, just different places in here, and. Um, we, you know, you guys always visit when you come yes. home for holidays or, um, why are you in town? What are you doing in town? I'm just here to kick it. Like I'm literally here to visit family and Hanging spend time. Family. And yeah, that was it. Hanging with the family and some good food? All the time. Look, yes. Look, I, I know it's the funniest thing. <laughs> when people come back, I have to like, I have to like really teach them like, yo, no, I promise you there's good food. You don't have to eat at Applebee's right now. You're, you're right. <laughs> I told you I wanted to hit you up to yeah. be like, where are the new food spots yeah. that are up around there's town? There's a couple... Like fan, have you been to Fancies? No, I saw how you post about it. It looked really good. Fancies is like the southern. They don't cafe. serve ketchup, right? Now that is Mad Fresh. Mad oh, okay. Fresh doesn't serve ketchup. Okay. They do now though. They got new management, and <laughs> I like that they didn't serve ketchup because they have this like really good aioli that they okay. have. And oh my god, you don't even need ketchup. But yeah, Mad Fresh. You got uh, Fancies, like a southern cafe, and mm-hmm. good like really fr- uh, good fried chicken. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of fried chicken, you went to, you just came back from Nashville. Yeah, I had the hot. Chicken. Hot chicken, Nashville hot chicken. Yo, how was that? Like, what it was, was amazing. That, was that chicken was something like I've never had before, <laughs> and it was hard to describe. The it's seasoning, very hard to describe. It, yeah, the texture was. Different. Was it spi- was it spicy that you couldn't like take it or? Was well, it... I like spicy, but I got the medium, right. and it was it was amazing. It was just flavorful. Yeah, man, and I think that's the you know Southwest Florida. We're getting there slowly but surely, but we got some good food out here now. We got nice guys. Never mind. Nice guys is um, great. And, and Cape Coral has put, stepped their game up a lot with the food, you know. Yeah. Um, is it weird coming back here and not even this weird, but what's the experience like coming back here and seeing things that you didn't see? Like, whoa, that's there? What? <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm like, damn, I wish that was there when I was living here. That's definitely yeah. my reaction every single time. Or like, even I came off the highway and I guess they widen the roads. And yeah. I was, I was, that was, that was a whole nother experience. I was like, damn, they got... Wider roads, like, oh. <laughs> yeah, but um, you just come back and it's kind of like you. Not that you get mad, you just kind of go, well, dang, like, <laughs> all right, like right now, are they're um, they're calling it, and we talked about this a little bit when I was in Atlanta, mm-hmm. um, but they're calling it Midtown, and they they have a plan. It's just crazy. <laughs> That's so crazy. <laughs> they call it. It's it's funny how gentrification works. You just yes. you call it something whatever you want. We're yes. gonna call this place. This sounds a cool new hit. Yeah. Like <laughs> we're gonna call this place Williamsburg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they're calling it Midtown, and they have a plan to like create um, like a millennial like community. That's beautiful. It's like really cool. But, but are it, they gonna gentrify everything? Are they gonna kick out? Yeah, that's we gotta talk about that because that's yeah, that's my main concern. Um, <laughs> well, it's cool. Personally. It's it's a cool idea, but like for me, I'm I'm 26 and I'm like, well, by the time that gets built, I'm gonna be like 40 and like I won't even benefit from this millennial. I won't be a millennial. <laughs> You're gonna be angry yeah, at the millennial, <laughs> the, the like. new generation. I don't know yeah. iPhone generation internet. Um, but it is it's always weird. I know for a lot of people that come back and they see what's different. Of course, um, yeah. And just I'm like so used the growth. To, yeah. Is, yeah. is it cool to see the growth for you? I think it's beautiful. There's definitely um, my reactions where I'm like, wow, this is great. Like, we actually have stuff now. Like, people can experience different things. When I was growing up, there was literally movies, beach, school. And I'm, <laughs> Walmart. I'm heading back to school. Late night Walmart. Exactly. <laughs> like, so, that's great. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, I, I just want to like, kind of get started with, like, asking you as far as, one, like, um, what was, like, your, like, what's your story as far as, like, you growing up here? You grew up, you grew up in uh, Dunbar, correct? No, I did not. Um, I grew up in Lehigh, actually. In Lehigh. Yes. So, like, the clone version of Cape Coral, <laughs> but trap but, houses. But, exactly. <laughs> but I grew up in well. Lehigh when it was country. Literally, it was the house I grew up in. It was one house, and the whole block was just woods. Um, there wasn't anything. There was. I remember when the Walmart got built out there. 
I remember wow. when we, yeah, so it was definitely way slower than it is now. That's a big deal. When a Walmart gets built, you know you, <laughs> the place has made it. I mean, come exactly. on. <laughs> like, it was like a big deal. Um, but I went to schools in Fort Myers, and yeah, my dad lived in Dunbar, so I was I was in Dunbar on like the weekends okay. type deal. So you're going Lehigh, Dunbar, Lehigh, Lehigh Dunbar. Dunbar, Lehigh, Dunbar, yeah. Okay. So you were kind of doing both. And mm-hmm. then, so what, you went to what high school? Fort Myers High School. Went to Fort Myers. Green Wave, yes. Wait, were you in the IB program? I was in the IB program. What? Graduated with my IB degree, yes. You know what I don't like about the IB program? Everything. Is that they call the other people the gen- general population. Yeah. Like, what? There <laughs> is definitely an attitude, like, um, oh with IB. There's, like, a certain attitude, but I wasn't like that. I don't know. I was... I was rapping and in IB, so I was... Yeah, how does that work? You were... <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you... I guess it's a stereotype, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't, I wouldn't naturally, or maybe culture wouldn't naturally mix the two of like being very, very uh, highly uh, um, academic and being a, a rapper. So how does how does that happen at the same time for you? I don't know. I'm a nerd and I like music. Like right. that, it was a it was a very natural thing for me. I mean, um, I'm all about education and I w- I excelled at it, but at the same time. I love music, and that's what I was doing. I was rapping, so I was... If you know Fort Myers High, I was in the C hallway, and I was also in the IB hallway, so I was I was back and forth. Do you remember the first time, like, you knew you liked rap? Like you were Yes. Like, when was that? I was six years old, six or seven. Um, my dad is super into rap, but he's, like, West Coast gangbang rap. Really? Yeah, like... He's from the West Coast? Where? No, he's from Fort Myers, born and raised... Um, but he always used to play like Ice Cube, N.W.A. and mm-hmm. Tupac. Um, so I was always riding with him in the car, and I just remember listening to the music he was playing, and I just I loved it naturally. Yeah. yeah. So do you do you feel like that's like do you so you have do you have like a West Coast so East Coast West Coast? I'm asking you, which, where do you where do you rock? Who do you rock with? Oh my, the South. Um, <laughs> the South, right? Yeah. I, I was definitely raised with some West Coast with music. West Coast, right? Absolutely. Uh, my brother though. We're super into Biggie and right. Eminem and So who was your who was your first favorite rapper? Do you remember? Like is that It was Lil Wayne. Yeah. Absolutely. Hot Boys. I was yeah. like I was like um fifth grade. Yeah, fifth grade, Wayne had just I think came out with a solo album or something like that and I was super into Wayne, Hot Boys, that whole movement. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to stunt like I was that. I was definitely that I'm little the kid. I'm the number one stunner. Yes, but well, what? What? Like that was that was me. Oh my god, my my phone's going off. Um, no, but that that's really cool. So you're you're in high school. Um, when did you start like making music? Um, well, I started writing raps when I was nine years old. I oh, so we just go we go back. We're going back. I was oh. I was at Edison Park, um, which is an art school, mm-hmm. arts arts elementary. And I, yeah, I started writing raps and like, I remember going to my friend group and was like, hey, we should start a rap group. Yeah. And it was, it was called CP3. C, like Chris Paul? No. <laughs> um, my first name is Patrice and the other kid's name was Karan. That was my friend. And then we had another uh, friend named Jeremy, but he didn't want to like be a rapper. So we didn't keep him in like the title of it. So it was CP3, but three people. It made sense. I was yeah. I was nine. It made sense. And um, yeah, we had a little rap group and we'd be rapping around the hallways. I would write for Jeremy or I would write for Karan. We'd make music. And that was back of the bus. That was back that was my start. It was back of the bus raps and around you the hallways. banging hallway. on the seat. Banging on the seat. Freestyle on <laughs> the back of the bus. Yeah. Um, yeah, walking around the hallways of Edison Park. I played piano as well. So that was like, I was just getting into music so like that. So you had this very intricate... You're like, you're late. I mean, everyone's layered, but I, I could see the layers. You have this, like, very, you're very driven academically. You have this art influence. Yeah. You're like, that's, and so coming together to seeing where you are now, that make, that really makes sense. Yeah, for you put sure. put those together. Um, so, that, I mean, I could, I mean, it's a testament to where you, how far you've come and what you've been doing. Um, so you, you started, like, rapping on the bus, like, that whole thing. <laughs> yes. How do you, how do you go from just, like, messing around to, like, yo, this is serious? Um, I think my mentality switched definitely in high school was the first mentality switch. I was as a freshman in high school and once again I found myself in a group situation and I don't know, I like was like a rap group? Rap group. I was in a rap group. I was, what was called the name of the rap group. 
uh, DSC was Dirty South Click. Dirty South Click. My name was Young South. Like, what? <laughs> yes. Yo. <laughs> yes. That makes it was, sense. That it makes was sense. very. <laughs> it was very serious, and I. I don't know. I was just like, we can do this. It was. It was just my mentality was like, this can be a reality. It's more than a dream. Um, and then I also had another phase when I was at, I was attending University of South Florida when I was eighteen, and I got in a really bad car accident, and I almost. I could have died, but I wasn't injured. And after that accident, it was like, I'm gonna do everything I can to actually make this happen. This is what I need to do with my life. This is my purpose. Versus, wow. you know, I'm in high school and it's it's cool. What about that car accident made you, was it, what, what changed in your mind you think that made you wanna do that? What was the paradigm shift there? Um, it was a very spiritual experience, actually, that car accident. Uh, we were going 90s miles per hour. I wasn't driving. My friend was. We were headed back to class. You know, we were late, coming from Fort Myers to Tampa. And we were going like 90. I remember looking at the speedometer. And all the cars just happened to just stop, get off the road. We swerved. We flipped, I guess, five times. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. She got ejected. Um, but I had no injuries. I just had, like, a, a, a scratch on my hand crawling out of the car i think when you go when you go through something that traumatic and you're kind of in between what is life and what is death right. everything kind of just clicks naturally on its own it was like what do i really want in this short span of life life is short you feel your life all i the felt time. i felt that and it was like you know you're in this dream world where you think everything is everlasting and it's not so i really had to look inside of myself and be like <laughs> What have I always wanted to do? Right. What do I actually want to do? I don't want to be here at USF studying sociology. I don't want to be right. a sociologist. Like, so after that, yeah, it just clicked in my head where it was, I have to do everything in my power to make this happen. Wow. Yeah. I think that is a very, in, I mean, very interesting. I mean, death is a very sobering, whether whether someone in your life that dies or whether you you taste a little bit of it uh, through a friend dying or whether you have a near-death experience. Absolutely. It, it's kind of like the same feeling of like what an 80-year-old feels when they're like, I know I'm dying in like two <laughs> months. You know, like yeah. they start to feel like, what do I want to do? What do, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, it's almost like Kanye-esque with the car accident. That was do you my compare line. yourself? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like that's one of, yeah, that's one of somebody artistically I look up to. So yeah, yeah I definitely related with that seatbelt line. So you said you wanted to be, you were going to school to be a sociologist. Yeah. And what made you want to do that? What? I, just something I'm interested in, sociology, psychology. I, I like to study the mind. I like to know people's behaviors, why we do the things we do. I'm, I'm still interested You're in still that. Interested. That's, that's still things I care about, for sure. Does that, is that something that comes out in your, uh, in your music? I think so. Different aspects of it, though. It's, it's not more so the writing aspect, but more so like the inspiration. Right. Like that inspires me seeing how people interact, why people act the way they do, things like Man, that. Man, you know, because having friends who are in the mental health field, and it's always weird when I'm around someone who I know is a counselor, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, stop studying. Because, exactly, they're going to ask you those certain <laughs> questions. You're like, I know you're trying to dive into I know you're trying to dive right in. Well, why do you feel that way? You know, I think I do that to my friends all the time. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, def I'm, I'm definitely the person. We have a lot of common. Yeah. And I, I mean, I enjoyed our conversation in Atlanta. Right. Um uh, but just like I'm, I'm definitely that person. who's always like, well, why, why, you know, why do you feel like you're that exactly. way? Exactly. Let's find the root of your. Yeah, problem like, do you right feel now. like you grew up that way? Like, what did <laughs> yes. your dad do to make you? Feel like oh, exactly. <laughs> like I don't have any, like any. If you're a close friend in my life, where there's not a whole lot of like surface level talk with me. It's just like no, because it's nothing's really surface level. Wow. See, look at you. Look, look I'm look doing it right you. now. I'm look doing it right now. Oh, my God. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, so let's switch gears a little bit then. Um, so <laughs> you 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 going to school for U, USF, yes. correct? Yes. Um, Go Bulls. So I don't know if I skipped anything from there that point on, but what happened with that that rap group? Did you how did you transition out of that <clears throat> in high school? Yeah, yeah. We just outgrew each other. I just that was it. Like we literally had a discussion. I was like, hey, I want to do like some soul stuff, right. and he was like, cool, me too, and that was it. So after high school, what was what was like? Where was your musical like landscape at at that point? Um, after high school, I was kind of like at a dry spell, to be honest, like from, um, 18 to 19. Right. And like I said, I, then I went through that car accident after the car accident, 
uh, I was still at USF and I started finding people on the campus that had a studio, started writing. I was like, yeah, I'm going to, no, man, I'm going to write, you know, right, right. the best verses of my life. So I started, um, excuse me, writing my mixtape then. Right. So I, you were a part of a very, and I'm good friends with everyone in the group, um, but a part of a legendary rap group called Pay Up. Yes. Um, Tell me how you got, I mean, that. I mean, when I say that, people who are watching are going to know exactly they what know. I'm talking about. Of course. Um, so how did that all come about? And how, you know, how did that all start with you? Um, I actually knew of Pay Up when I was in high school. I mean, they were definitely making moves. Oh, so they were already gone before. Oh, yeah. Like, I knew of them. Right. I was I was just in my group at the time. Right. But we definitely knew who they were. Um, knew Andre, knew Els, like, knew of them as fans. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, I was definitely a fan of Andre first, and we became like online friends. Right. And then after I got in the car accident, um, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna move back to Fort Myers and make music. I was like, who out is out here like making music that's like right. on that level that I want to be on? It was Andre. So I hit up Andre, and I was like, hey, I have this mixtape that I need to record. Can I come record it at your house? He was like, absolutely. So that happened. And I ended up recording that mixtape all in one night at his house. It was probably, he was That's annoyed as crazy. fuck. Um, yeah, because I told him, I was like, I think he thought it was just like a track. And he's like, oh yeah, cool. But I recorded like 12 tracks oh um, my God. in a night. And yeah, so that started that relationship. And I just eventually became a part of Pay Up as an actual person of the roster. I mean, that, that roster is just, I mean between L's who I knew as ruthless back in high <laughs> yes. school who was just barring up yes, you yes. know between to to Andre with his the his way his voice is on a sounds on a song is so it, it just it's it, it dem yeah, it's powerful it yeah. demands it and then uh who else we have we have Jay mm -hmm. with the with the one liners and the swag he comes yes. on with the songs like everybody just you know talented yeah very really talented group of people and I mean, so my brother's friends with, was really mostly friends with you guys. And so I'm like the little, just like <laughs> popping up at shows. Hey like, guys. yo, what's up? <laughs> can I buy a shirt? I got like $5, but can I get a shirt for five, please? Yes, you yes. know, but uh, I, I looked up to and still do look up to what you guys did um, at that time because you guys were putting out quality music um, at a level that was just like, dude, like, you know, everything that was coming out at the time was like, and, and no shade to them, but it was like, you know, real like plies ish type, like it, it was it was a different style, but I felt like I knew that yeah. you guys were tapping into where I felt like music actually was on the forefront of music, not Absolutely. just like you know, not just like our backyard, not just city. It was not, it was it was bigger than that. It was, it was and I, I totally agree, and like that was why I gravitated towards Pay It because right. they were putting out product that was on the level that I wanted to be on. It wasn't on some, you know, just remain local. It was. We're serious about our careers, and we we have the knowledge of the industry and our writings above. It's top notch. Our beats right. are top notch. Our videos are quality. Yeah. Like, what yeah. was that? The Stampede video. The yeah, Stampede. The Stamp. Video. Yo, if you're watching yeah. this, you can go check out right now. I'm gonna put it please, in the link. Please, oh god. Go watch. I have long hair. <laughs> yeah. Please, yeah. Please look, look, look. You are like a completely like you're the same person that I know, but like. Like visually, like you just change a lot. Your hair. I switched ever. the swag. The name where you were you were going by Bang. I was going by Bang Boogie. Bang yeah. Boogie. You're still on my phone as Bang Boogie. I'm in a, a lot of people's phones as Bang, and they won't change it. So no, because I'll, I'll like cool. I'll go to text you and I'll be like, sure, up. no. Uh, oh yeah, Bang. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what what is your your real name? Your government. Patrice Sherelle Swagger. So, so Sherelle's my middle name. So Swagger. Swag is in your name. <laughs> Swag you is kidding? in my name. Yes. Um, <laughs> before it was cool, my family has always called each other Swag. Uh, it's just, that's, that's just oops, hilarious. That's just a little funny bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So what was what was like maybe some of the or what just one big challenge? You guys had this really great roster of people. Um, with the whole pay up thing, mm -hmm. and and I I mean I literally was like yo these guys are gonna make it they have to make it this, if they don't like who will like I, I was so I believed in you guys so much yeah. what was like the maybe the biggest challenge that you saw with being these really great artists in Southwest Florida but you guys I mean you guys made waves but like yeah. you, you didn't I I thought you guys could blow up bigger so yeah. what was the, like the biggest challenge with that I think um, 
coming from the local scale and like broadening out to the world that was that was a challenge yeah like making it on a national scale international scale and all be on the same page about it i think that was definitely our biggest challenge right for sure do you do you feel like um because this is like the problem not even the problem but this the struggle is like as a local artist where you're in a local town where it's not you're not getting as much support as you think you should or like do you, I, I, I'll rephrase it like this. Which was more important, the local or what, what? What process is better? Getting big locally and then internationally, or internationally then locally? Because it seems like nowadays, like here, I just don't see. It's hard for me to believe that someone's gonna blow up locally. What does it mean to even blow up locally? <laughs> I think you have to know when you reach your peak in your city. I think it's very important to have a local fan base. I think it's always important to know where you come from and create that sense of home, like this is home. But you have to know when to venture out. You have to know when the local fame is just local fame. fame. And realizing that and realizing when you need to branch out. How did you know? How did you know when to do that? Um, me, personally, it was a mixture of just self growth and realizing that this is nothing like I think I'm cool because uh, people know me when I step out the door but I want more mixture of that and also having people good people in my corner telling me the same thing like right. <laughs> keeping me humble like keeping me like nah this you're bigger even, than that this ain't even you it. think you think oh oh you sold out a show at such and such no that's not you can Man. you need to sell a show out you know in New York you know, or that's, Paris or you know it's that's challenging for, even for me you oh, know yeah. because I have this huge passion for local but multiple people and then in my own conscience tells me Malik like you can do this at a bigger scale yeah and I definitely had that moment try to change my like change my mind like my mentality to like all right it's not it's not a bad thing and that's why I wanted to do this homecoming series because it's not a bad thing to to want to be bigger, it's like a lot of people go, oh well, you left. Yeah, and, and I think <laughs> yeah, and I think I sure. even did that for a little bit, like oh they left, they, you know. But it's like no, like what do you mean? You know, I I want to be able to champion the people that do leave, and when I leave, if I leave, I want people to champion me as I you know as I go out. Um, I just feel like maybe some people either do one of two things: they either only focus on the local fame, which is can be addictive or kind of distracting to like the bigger picture. Okay. Or they just go, I'm, you know, they go out and they claim another city and they don't remember where they came from. Yeah, I've never been that person. But also, I, I feel like you, it's very important to be realistic. Like, be realistic. Yes, we're dreamers and um, we're, we're trying to turn that into reality. But you have to be realistic of where you're at. And, you know, I come from a certain city and it has a certain demographic. It has a cer certain peaks and lows. And, like, I had to be realistic of my environment and where I'm going to, where I want to go, how yeah. far I want to go personally. So I think that's important is to, is to be realistic about your surroundings. Yeah. It's home. It's always going to be home. Yeah, it's always going to be a part of me. I would never claim another city. Right. I would never No, Like literally my mother and father live here. <laughs> like yeah. I, I'm going to be back. Um, <laughs> so you, it seems like you have a big passion um, and it, it was not really surprising because I know you're a great person, but like it was surprising to see just how much one you know, how much experience you've had in this community, mm -hmm. and just how much you care, like to yeah. even for the future, like to do things. So, like, yeah. what's your vision for that? Like, what do you see um, Sherelle doing for Southwest? I mean, the community, Dun the community Dunbar, because it seems like you want to do something. Yeah, stuff for that. I, I honestly want to tap into the youth of of uh, Southwest Florida and Dunbar specifically. Um, there's a lot of crime, obviously. There's a lot of just let's say fuckery <laughs> yeah, between yeah. between the community and the authority mm -hmm. I've definitely experienced in my family for myself I've experienced it so I definitely want to help out in that ways uh, my whole vision was create programs after school programs things of that have kids actually be able to do something go somewhere yeah. productive and safe uh, rather than just get dropped off of the school bus and be out in the streets or get into right. trouble. So yeah, that's really important to me. It's 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 deeper. It's my family too. Yeah. Like I've definitely had cousins affected by things. My father, 
um, uncles. So it's 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 personal for sure. Yeah, yeah. and that, I think that's the beauty about you becoming successful, and and whatever you define that as. But I think in the general sense of if you as you grow and you you gain success, you're looking backwards, and I think it's gonna be so helpful for the community. So when you win, we win, you know, and it's like, absolutely. and I, I love that. I, I cheer you on, man. Like I put your, Thank like you. I, anything you do, I want to be able to be like, yeah, like even if it's not just, just focused on Southwest Florida, because I think curate, um, what we're doing with our brand is like, we're trying to focus on Southwest Florida, but you are Southwest Florida, no matter where you go. Yeah. So, so speaking of that, wherever you go, you're in Atlanta right now. A town, yeah. A town. A town stomp. Dude, tell me. <laughs> I went. I got. To, I had the chance to go. Uh, st- I was at Bonnaroo. I was taking a little trip, and on my way back, I stopped in and saw you. And you showed me a good time for a yeah, couple, a little bit. For like for a, little, a couple yeah. hours. But um, from the little I saw and the little and the, the a lot you told me, it seems like Atlanta is going really well for you. I love Atlanta. Yeah. It's 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 home right now. I definitely feel like um, I can express myself fully in Atlanta, and I've never really felt as in tune to a place as I have in Atlanta. Um, yeah. So that's beautiful to me. What's it like? What's it like right now? The, I mean, it seems like the center of music is in Atlanta. It seems like the heart of yeah. where music, the yeah. sound, the produ- the production, the flow, it's like so much, God. so much. It's vibrant. Um, Definitely, it always has been. I mean, I've I've been traveling back and forth from Atlanta, from Florida to Atlanta for a minute, but it's it's the same. Uh, the The community up there is is way more open and more supportive, and that's what I really appreciate about right. Atlanta. Um, everybody's creative up there. You could walk into a coffee shop, you could walk into a juice shop, and your person who is is selling something to you is actually one of the dopest rappers right, <laughs> like you, right, right, you've right, never right. heard of. Um, so that's really cool. It's just a, it's a, it's a land of opportunity and creatives. Um, it's a black capital. It's a lot of that as well. Yeah. I think that's that's beautiful. Um, yeah, I love Atlanta. So it, you it got, was a good move. It was a good so move. Have, have you read like so you got a couple different who would, who would you say are like the biggest um movements or rappers or musicians that are really like running atlanta do you feel do you feel uh, like it's even a thing oh yeah for sure um well at least on my scale and what mm-hmm. i come across is definitely work crew which xavier Shouts out to x man <laughs> exactly. xavier is get a, you on this thing man xavier came from fort myers originally new york but he was in fort myers for a long time so work crew is his crew dj collective uh they do amazing things international sounds uh Global Rhythms, they're just, they're on that. Uh, also, Love Renaissance is great. Rari. Uh, so, R- Rari, so, Rari's still rocking out there. Like, oh, yeah. 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 I didn't, I didn't know. His I know cl- like, before. him and his collective run things, for sure. They put on uh, amazing events, as well as back great, talented artists. So. And, you, and you've run into, like... Just all these artists, like who are some of the? I biggest? haven't ran into Rory personally, but I've definitely been to Love Renaissance events. All right, I'm gonna name. I'm gonna start naming some. Atlanta, oh I'm gonna start naming some Atlanta people. You gonna tell me if you seen them running? Okay, but Gucci. Nope. Ti. Nope. His wife. Yeah. Yeah. What's she doing out here? In the club. In the club. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. were, we were in the club. Uh, Outcast. Andre, you see Andre. Oh, Ooh, Ooh, I was so close to seeing Andre three thousand. I was mad. I was supposed to be at the venue. He was at. <sighs> see, the thing with Andre three thousand is, the beautiful thing about him is he stays in tune with the underground. So literally, you could be at just a regular schmegular like venue, yeah. and Andre three thousand is in the back. And I was supposed to be <sighs> at this one venue, and Xavier hit me like, "Yo, Andre three sex just walked in and showed love like." Yeah. Well, he just he, he said his, his one of his favorite rappers is Young Thug right now. That's and that's I was beautiful. like, Young Thug is amazing. Yo, you well, yeah, Young Thug. Yeah, is but <laughs> no, he's very in tune. Yeah. yeah, so he's very in tune with what's happening right now. He's very on the scene. He's not Hollywood, but I haven't personally. No, I haven't. I'm mad. Right, I'm sorry. I need, I, need, I need to name some more people. Have you seen Young Thug riding horses out there? No, and it's crazy. <laughs> uh, he was downtown that one day. Yeah, no, I haven't seen Young Thug. I haven't seen Young Thug. 21, 21 from Atlanta? 21. 21, 21 is 21. from Atlanta. I have not seen him. So so tell me about, um, you got Awful Records. Yes. 
Um, you got Father, Kilo. Who else is in there? Uh, Abra. Abra. Poe, Keith, Keith Charles. How did you get, I know you had some affiliation with them. Like, what's your relationship like? What's your relationship like with them? They're family to me. Yeah. They are my friends. Like, we hang out all the time. They're, they're family, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And you, have you made music with them at all? Or, I have. Yeah. Um, in the past, they were, well, Father was on my last album. It's featured on my last album. I've made music with Narf, Louis Diamonds, um, Keith Charles, every, a little bit of yeah. everybody. It's just like when we, if we're vibing, we make music. We make music. Oh man. Yeah. And so are you? Are you sound? Are you signed to anyone? Like, no. what do you? What's your take on this whole man? Like the independent versus label? Because everybody's like, fuck labels fuck right the now. Fuck label. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, on. I'm on the same wave. It's just how how is a record label even still existing now? It just seems like. Um, I don't know. It's a struggle for them. I know they're down to like three major labels right now, but. Yeah, the the game has definitely changed. It's indie. Own your rights. Own your, own your fucking own your, masters. Yeah. Create your own publishing companies. Like we can do this ourselves. You can own all your rights and get all of your money or at least a major percentage. Um so I think if you're not doing that, I mean, if whatever works for you, but it doesn't work for me. Yeah, I mean, you you, you could drop stuff whenever you want, yeah. right? I have I have complete creative control. Speaking of creator control, like, how do you feel like, because I know I got had the opportunity, I'm going I'm to start bragging a little bit to hear <laughs> your project that you you're, did, you're yes. gonna, that's coming I out. I gave you the sneak peek. And yeah, I got a little sneak peek. Yes. I actually recorded it on my phone and I'm going to leak it. Oh, I'm my playing, God. I'm, playing. <laughs> I'm totally playing. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, I've always wanted to be able to, like, leak an album. Though. I always felt like... <laughs> That'd be like that's a, a terrible goal. <laughs> uh, just want to be that leaker. I just want to be the leaker. Want to be leaker. Um, no, nah, I'm playing. But um, <laughs> uh, I your your sound has changed and it sounds amazing. Thank Let me you. just tell you. you. Like I was in the car and I was just like, yo, like <laughs> what? Um, so how do you feel like it's changed? Like how do you? I, mean, I guess it, may, it might be hard to say that about yourself but how do you feel like your music has changed from- um, my music has changed just as much as I have my music has evolved just as much as I have really there's 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 the actual connection so as I've evolved as a woman as a human being so has my music and that's just a reflection my art will always be a direct reflection of where I'm at at the time who I am what I what I'm going through my experiences so Cause I wouldn't even consider you a rapper <laughs> Like when I heard it, I was like, yeah. "You're just an artist." That's exactly what you're I was doing. You're just an artist. Like that was literally my mindset. I I just wanted to be more so. Um, I wanted to challenge myself sonically. Uh, I wanted to challenge myself as a writer. That's that's how I went into that project for sure. I know for every artist, it's hard for them to find their voice for, with anything. When you express yourself, of course, was it harder for you? Do you feel like it was hard for you as a woman to find, especially being in hip hop? Was it, was it hard for you to find your voice uh, as, yeah. a, as a woman? Yeah, I, I won't say it was easy not at all. Like, it was definitely a process. It was definitely um, going into the studio with Peter. We definitely had ses- sessions where sometimes we didn't make music. Sometimes we just talked about life. It was therapy. It, it was, was hashing stuff out. Hashing stuff out. Like, what's going on in your world? What's going on in my world? Like, let's just talk. Let's hang out. Let's go to the beach. Let's, let's um, you know, watch a movie. Let's, yeah. It was we we did that, and I'm just very grateful to have someone like Peter uh, Lemieux. He goes by his producer yeah, name. Lemieux. I'm I'm very grateful to have that person in my corner. Where it's just like, it wasn't all about just music, music. It was just like, hey, how are you? How are, are you, you good? Doing? Like, what's going on in your life? Like, what's your perspective now? Yeah. Versus you know who you were three years ago. That's where your that's where your music flows from. Absolutely. So once we did that and just hashed out life shit, um, us creating together. You know we've created together since I was nineteen, twenty years old. So it's a long time. So I know him very well. He knows me very well. What's your relationship like? So so Lemieux, um, shouts out to him. He's a yes. Southwest Florida native. Yes. As well. The guy. Um, he is killing it. Dude. Killing like, it. He'll sometimes he'll send me like uh I'll be like yo tell me what's good how you you up to he'll say yeah I'm working with Anderson Pot but I'm, oh, I'm yeah. like oh my god that's gosh. the boy oh my gosh that's the boy he is it's, it's yes. just crazy between yes. X and Peter and you like yeah. Yeah. you guys are just man it, it's so cool to see and so 
he ha- you work with him closely with your music like yes. is he like producing did he like produce he produced um, all of uh my new project do you have a name do you know the name of your name? <laughs> yeah it's called phases called phases is that exclusive is that the first time you that's the first time i've ever said that I'll, uh, oh hold uh, up to, hold to up people that weren't my close friends hold and... up uh exclusive exclusive <laughs> so you gotta drop the new bombs. shit new shit new shit i'm dropping bombs well, on this edit here. I'm dropping flex bombs, clue bombs, everything. Yes, yes, <laughs> phases. Is yeah. that so? Is that a reflection of like what we were just talking about? Like Absolutely. you going through phases? Well, now you know. Yeah. Now, <laughs> see, look, we 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 getting exclusives out here. Yes. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. I that title is everything we've just discussed. It's my evolution as a woman, as a human being, as an artist, um, as a friend, as a daughter, as a girlfriend, as as you know, a sister. Yeah. That's phases. Yeah, it, it. I just posted last night. I said, "Don't discredit the immature phases of your life because Ever. it made you." Because I, it people, you know, I feel like we look back and we go, "I was so stupid, man. That <laughs> that season of life was dumb. That was whatever." It's like, yo, like, don't just throw. Don't try to throw that. If out. you're smart, you learned. You learned, like, yeah, you learned from it. Hopefully, 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 you learned from it, and that that's basically um, was the theme of that of this project it was, it was just like i've gone through so many different me's i've gone through so much self-reflection i've gone through so much experiences bad good you know terrible amazing highs lows yeah. mids so it's like it was i felt like i was finally like i'm finally who i want to be as a person i finally found myself i found my sound i found all these things kind of finally clicked and and but all of those phases that i went through led me here so Dang. yeah that was that that's the meaning behind that what can we expect from like this this project now without, without giving too much away yeah um what what do we i mean it's because i'm i'm like when i was in the car and you were playing uh, music for me i i like had a expectation of what i was gonna hear because of the from the last time i heard you of course yeah, yeah. so it's like it's almost like you have to throw that out and go, no, no, no. Like you have to experience this in a new way. It was, yeah. it was such a cool experience. Thank it you. was like surprise. It was like, not that I didn't expect it from you. It was just like a, oh my gosh, like this is a new sound. And it was refreshing, yeah. you know? Thank um, you. But, but I, I just thought it was really cool. Um, but yeah, shout out to Peter, man. He, shout I out think, to him. I, I love that you were talking, the, the creative process is more than just like, what, how are we going to produce this? And what yeah. am I going to say? It's, it's hashing it out in your heart and with your friends first. And, yeah. and it's cool that you're working with your friends. Yeah, you know? I, I'm, I'm blessed in that, uh, for sure. I'm, I'm surrounded by people that have known me. for so- Shout out to Paris, too. Um, Paris, yeah, man. Paris Pierce is a Fort Myers native. Fort Myers I've known native, him since man. I was in sixth grade. Met him at Cypress Lake Middle School. <laughs> um, so shout out to him. Him and Peter super are Super creative, powerful. super creative yeah. and talented, dude. Super talented. Man. So I'm, I'm thankful... Um, to have those people in my life that have known me for so long and are able to check me when I'm wrong, able to, you know, see my growth and, and promote my growth. Um, uh, I'm, I'm super blessed with that. So it's, it's yeah. very unique in, in that aspect of creation because I've been creating with people that I've known for so long. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's not on some super Hollywood shit. Yeah. It's, it's like this homegrown, um, how, how, so how do, how, do, how do you define success? Like for you, how do you define like, how do you know when you've made it? Peace, I think. Uh, me personally, peace of mind and just happiness. When I'm elated naturally, when I wake up in the morning and I'm just, I'm happy. I'm, I'm peaceful. I'm okay. I'm good. I'm great. That to me is success, mm. honestly. A lot of people have material values holding on to success and oh I have to get this, I have to get that. Right. But it's so much more to me. It really those things are come. Right. When right, you right. have that mindset and mentality of, you know, I know who I am, I'm I'm at peace, I'm happy, um, I have love in my life, real genuine love, and you're surrounded by that, everything else, uh, material speaking mm. will come. What do you and I want to ask this to every one of our guests we do for this homecoming series, but this is like kind of like the, the, I think the culminating question is like, what do you, if you, you know, people that are watching 
and a lot of people plan on moving um, to a bigger, you know, a lot, a lot of times we feel, a lot of times here, right, like we are big fishes in a small pond. Yeah. Um, and you definitely hear you are big fish in a small pond. What, and that's actually one of my biggest fears is like, yo, I move to LA, I move to here, and I'm just going to be like, I'm nobody. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> You're right? Like, I, yes. I have no, what do you, what do you wish you knew before you move? Like, what, what are some of the things that you feel like, man, I wish I would have had this before I moved there? One, I, I say, rewind, is that fear like legit? Like, is that actually a thing? Like, did you feel like, oh shit, like, like all this stuff going on and I'm, I don't, like, did you still feel the same? Like, you were the like same the culture person? shock of moving you, to a new city? Just, like, the, the level before. of, like, you probably had a level of confidence here. Like, Absolutely. I'm pretty fucking dope. Like, Bob, Absolutely. Like, but did you, when you moved there, did you go, like, oh, shit, I ain't nothing? Or, like, how yes. did that work? Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Damn, that's Absolutely. so scary, like, um, to feel that. Yeah, but it is what it is. And you grow through it. And you and you you grow through it. You go through it. And you accept that. And then you, it, it produces the best you if you're capable if you're that strong it'll pull it out of you absolutely yeah because it's like okay i'm going to be in tune with this city's energy and i'm going to conquer it and that's that's the mindset i went into when i moved initially from um fort myers to miami it was a huge culture shock for me to be honest it was it was it's a way bigger city um it's very uh spanish influenced it's it's completely different mm. from fort myers it's f- way more faster pace right. so i had to just like catch, catch up right like, hop on catch up and if you don't then go back home like right. and i wasn't trying to go back home you're trying to go back home no so it was my mentality changed absolutely um initially though before moving did i have that fear no i didn't think so i had my my confidence of here and absolutely. this is who i am and i'm coming to your city type Thing. But I, I definitely, <laughs> when I moved, it was definitely a humbling experience of like, right. no, this is not your hometown. Wow. So, um, so what yeah. do you, what do you wish you would have known before you moved there? If like, if you could give advice to someone that might be just, you know, um, taking the next step to move somewhere to a bigger city, like, do you have any advice for them? Like, be maybe? realistic, and I keep saying that, but it's because I think sometimes people go into things without fully thinking of every option and aspect of it like be realistic of where you're going um your plan not just don't just have a dream make Mm. that dream be a plan and Mm. actually that's how you attack it smaller goals to a bigger goal i heard was the difference between a dream and a goal is a a plan and i totally agree with that and that that's that's my advice and yeah that was definitely i didn't go to miami like that i kind of just threw myself into miami right just was like okay fuck it so yeah i forgot that you left before you you went to miami first yeah i was in miami for three years so how did you navigate miami different than atlanta just you were you had a plan with atlanta and you didn't have a plan with miami yeah miami i kind (laughs) of just (laughs) just went i went with yeah i went with the flow of of everything and um yeah I, i faced some setbacks and and things of that nature but I eventually got, you know, caught on to their energy yeah. and their pace. Man. Well, I just want to just say, like, we, I'm speaking for the city. I'm the spoke <laughs> for the city. I do it for the city. <laughs> for the city. Um, that, you know, we love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Um, I support you fully. Um, I, I, I champion you all the time. Like, yo, you need to check this out. Like, I like just playing stuff. Like, the other day I was just playing, um, the the trailer whatever the, yeah, that you yeah, put out yeah. and uh so, someone's like yo what is that i'm like just wait, <laughs> just, wait just wait but um thank you um we love what you're doing um is there anything this is probably released like I mean, next week is there anything that people should look out for yeah look out for my official video which is going to be the first single off of my new project and it's entitled called, phases it's, okay the album's called phases the video that video you just call called yeti put, yeti yes <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. Where'd you shoot that? You shot that? <laughs> L.A., like in the, the desert. Desert. The Palmdale, California, specifically. Uh, it was so beautiful. I cried. I cried. Like I literally cried. Really? Like, yeah, I gave thanks to God. Like in that moment, it was it was incredible. I've never seen an environment like that. I'm from here. I'm yeah, like, <laughs> I've never I've never seen something like that, and it was amazing. Um, fully directed by Paris Pierce, who is a, another two three nine oh native. Gosh. Um, edited by Paris. He was a one man band. Like that story. Yeah, I watched crazy. the credits. It was like Paris. Paris, Paris, Paris. 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 Yeah, no, he's a one man band. 
Um, yeah, it was it was it was a beautiful experience, one of the best experiences of my life, shooting that video. So yeah, it's it's entitled Yeti, off okay. of my project I, Faces. I love the video. Where was Thank that? You. I don't want to give anything away. There was That's a cool. there was a shot in the woods. Is yeah, that... we were the Los Angeles force. Oh my god, it's dude, beautiful. that was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And the colors that you guys, what you guys oh, were wearing, gosh. like the way the palette. Shout out to that. Kanji. Kanji's Kanji? out of Miami. Yeah, <laughs> that's my creative director. Uh, she also styled the video. <sighs> beautiful did the makeup yeah it was it was crazy i just never seen any uh i'm inspired by nature i'm really inspired by nature so seeing all of that in a different environment was was crazy yeah you know, it's it's a visually appealing you, you don't really want it to end after you watch it you're just like i, I <laughs> yeah. really to be honest i really wanted more like i want to see more of those woods like I'll, <laughs> give me more of that shit okay. please like it was good. so it good. was good it was really good thank I, you thank you um i, I I should have got some videos done by Paris when I had the chance to. Ooh. Now I don't know his price. I don't know his yeah, price. that boy price went up. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh my gosh. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you for um, having me. Thanks for stopping in while you were in town. Um, wish you the best. And, um, yeah. Safe travels back to the ATLs. Thank you. I'll yeah, see you up next time. we get some more good food. Yes, we will. we get some soul food. We get, oh, man. <laughs> All right, take care.